What is going on everyone? Welcome into another episode of our AS Roma the Let's Play series here on Football Manager 2023. Welcome in everyone, if you're new to the channel, thanks for coming along, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload a video. If you missed any of the other episodes before coming on to this one, please go and check them out first. Really good, really exciting, lots of stuff going on, not just only in terms of games, but transfers, storylines, all that good stuff. So please do go and check that out today. We have a very big one in the follow-up to the last episode, in which we had a kind of a roller coaster episode really we managed to bring in a lot of good signings on transfer deadline day as we'll have a look here um but at the same time we also had a little bit of issues and a little bit of down form with our results we signed likes of whacking career on loan we got kayla Coley, fabio moretti wisdom and may as well um, and we also managed to get out a couple of big earners the likes of ante chodic etc we had to, of course, replace the likes of Zaniolo, who wanted to leave, as did Chris Smalling and Marash Kambula. Very disappointed with that, but we've made some adequate, if not better, replacements, that is for sure. And today, we are going to see them in action. And you guys are going to get to see them in action in a short moment's time. But before we do get into that, let's talk about the results that we've had previously. So as you'll see, we'd hit a little bit of a lull. Um, we'd lost four of our last seven games across January and Feb, including losing three in a row to Torino, Milan and Juventus as well. Now, since then, we started off with the Monza game and there's been a, a fairly good upturn in form. It's been a little bit better, a 2-0 win over Monza, Tammy Abraham getting both. Um, and that followed a disappointing draw against Betsia. Dybala did get us ahead, but Daniele Verdi almost instantly equalised for them and it wasn't enough to see out the win. As you can imagine, I was very, very annoyed, particularly with Spezia being rock bottom in the table. So that is without a doubt, two points dropped. We had this game against Napoli, a nil-nil draw in the end, which actually wasn't bad. You know, remember that was away at the time. They were also fourth in the table as well. So it was a really tough game. Um, you know, very, very tough to go to. Obviously, the uh, Stadio Diego Armando Maradona. That's quite a mouthful in itself, isn't it? Um, and so to get a point and a clean sheet wasn't the worst result in the world. We then came into a, a game that was just as big against Fiorentina. Let's have a look at the highlights here. It was a 2-1 victory, but remember though, these were actually third in the table as of the time of playing this game. They were above us. They've been doing really well. They're having a fantastic season, even now, after us beating them, they are still fifth. And as you can see here, they actually went ahead. Bonaventura went into Milenkovic and it was a set-piece goal. Very, very disappointing to give that one away. But thankfully, Paolo Dybala came up big in the second half as we started mounting our comeback. Some really nice passing in the middle of the pitch. Spinazzola then feeding it through to Paolo Dybala who levered it past Terracino in goal. And that was then 1-1. We then went on to get the winning goal. Giorgio Scalvini on the head of Dybala with the assist from the free kick. And he was coming in at the back post like an absolute rocket. And that was a fantastic win. A really, really terrific win. What followed was something quite spectacular. As you'll see here, we beat Sampdoria 7-1, this time in the league. However, if you scroll up a little bit here, you'll notice we beat them in the cup 7-1 as well. So both times we beat them 7-1. That is uncanny. That is absolutely crazy. As the result was coming in, it was happening. I was kind of thinking, oh my God, this is actually going to happen. That's, I've never even seen anything like that in FL. I mean, I've seen a lot of things in Football Manager over the years, but I've never seen something like that to beat the same team 7-1 twice in a matter of weeks pretty crazy what followed was another really good performance against Empoli a 4-0 win in the end Roger Ibanez Caleb Acoli getting his first goal for his new club Fabio Manetti and Giorgio Scalvini obviously three of our new signings all getting onto the score sheet there and then we did have the Europa League round of 16 draw and it was a 1-0 loss away of Bayer Leverkusen. Unfortunately, we do have the second leg, as you will have seen already, to look forward to. And we are at home at the Stadio Olimpico as well. So do bear that one in mind. Finally, we had this game against Lecce. Now, do bear in mind, despite the fact that we did draw this 3-3, I actually made about 10 changes for this uh, with the kind of Europa League game in mind. Um, I decided that, obviously, as we always do in FM, 
you know, with the cup, you can get knocked out straight away. Whereas in the league, you have chances to make up for it in the, the latter fixtures. So I decided to make all the changes for the league game. And now we should hopefully be fresh for this second leg against Leverkusen. And hopefully we can get, get a good result. That's not the only game you have to look forward to, though. As you can see, we've also got Lazio away, away. And then Juventus at home as well. So three cracking, tough games that I've got for you today. A triple header. Hopefully, it will go a little bit better than last time, in which, obviously, we lost those two games against Milan and Juventus. So with this game in mind, let's have a look at how the lineup is shaping up. Rodri Banez has returned to the team. He's happier now. He's now settling a little bit. He does want a new contract, but he's not actually unhappy at the moment. And since then, his performances, as you can see, a massive upturn. He's performing really well at this right centre-back role. Kato Akoli, as you can see, his performances have improved as well from that nightmare of a debut. And the same with Giorgio Scalvini as well, all looking really good. Fabio Moretti coming to the team. And again, he's just been brilliant, absolutely brilliant. So loving the development that those new signings are showing. You'll have noticed also we made a little tweak to the tactic. I should mention we're actually using the attacking system this time um, because obviously we are 1-0 behind against Leverkusen. So we need to kind of press the advantage and as you'll notice the defensive midfielder has now changed to a deep lying playmaker just trying to get them more involved in the play hoping that that will kind of see a, a slight upturn in form as well it has seemed to be working fairly well so far it's coincided with our recent up form um so let's see how it goes shall we let's see how this one goes then really desperate to get some success in this competition and if anything it gives us another route into the Champions League so we don't have necessarily have to finish in the top four but most importantly we just want silverware we want trophies as much as possible so starting off already got a highlight here that's really good pressing Gini Vijnaldum through to Abraham can he cut that one back we've got a free man he goes to Zalewski oh save from Fredeki and he forces a corner but that's a decent start from us Right then, Debar looking to win this one in at the back post. It hits the bar. It's Giorgio Scalvini. Another chance. And it is still not going our way. Oh, Pellegrini well won. That's good pressing again. Dybala through to Abraham. He scores, but is he going to be onside? It looks good so far. Yes, it is. There's no check. That's it. It's a goal. We're back into it. And that is more than deserved. As you see, we've been playing brilliantly. And Pellegrini, lovely pressing. Dabala slotting that through. Abraham using his pace and slots it past Radecki. What a brilliant, brilliant start. We've been tremendous in this first half. 1-1. One, one. Yes, Pellegrini's pressing. It is fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go then. He's going to slot that one through. Dybala, keepers in no man's land. Oh, what a finish. Paolo Dybala, that is absolutely superb. Wonderful stuff. Look at that. We've got to get the replay of that. That was absolutely brilliant. Look at this. Spinazzola, Pellegrini, and loops it into Dybala. Keeper, got to be questions asked, but Dybala, wonderful. Chest and dink over the keeper. That is absolutely magnificent. That's what we're paying him the big bucks for. 140 grand a week. He's got to step up in these sort of games. Pellegrini looking for Abraham and he's got him. And what a goal that is. Out of nothing from the set piece. It's a short one. Play to Pellegrini. He just puts a ball over the top. And their defence is just caught sleeping. It is caught napping. Tammy Abraham is there ready to pounce on that. Look at that. He's got the pace on tar all day. It looks like he's running in mud. This is one of the reasons I don't watch 3D. Because it just looks a whole lot worse than what it did in 2D. But we'll take it all day long. Good pressing. Well done. Ryan Alden winning that one. Vigna, Bellotti. Oh, what a fantastic pass to Joaquin Correa. And oh my word, that is a stunning, stunning goal. Andrea Bellotti has to take the plaudits for that because that is a tremendous ball to spot that and pick that out perfectly. Absolutely wonderful. And a lovely run from Joaquin Correa. Brings it down nicely and slots it past the keeper. What a resounding win this has been. 4-0. And still going now. That is absolutely tremendous. A brilliant response to losing the first leg. Truly brilliant. It's taken an eternity. Come on, let's get it done. Where's the full-time whistle? We're going to be here all day. Finally, well done. What what a result. That's brilliant. So, so pleased with that. That's absolutely tremendous. Pressing was absolutely sublime. And some of the goals were fantastic, weren't they? Really good. And I'm excited for this next draw now. So here is the quarter-final Europa League draw. I'll be honest. I have just got a feeling that it's going to be Lazio. I don't know why. Um, so 
let's find out, shall we? These are the teams we can play. We've got Arsenal, Lazio, Napoli, Trabzonspor, PSV, Nantes, uh, Man United, and of course Roma as well. Obviously, I would like Trabzonspor, really, Nantes. That would be nice. Uh, I'm expecting one of the two English clubs or Lazio. So let's find out, shall we? Our host, Angelo Peruzzi. He draws that Lazio first. And it's Arsenal. Right, okay. So that rules out two of the big guns there. Uh, who is next up? It is Roma. It is us. So we start off with a home tie. Travis and Spore and Nantes would be preferable. Or, or maybe even PSV. And it's going to be Man United. Oh dear, oh dear. So that is <laughs> a ridiculously tough draw. But then again, in the quarterfinals, that's what you're expecting, isn't it? You know? Uh, Travis and Spore get Napoli and PSV get Nantes. So there it is. We've got Manchester United. It is going to be a very tough one. Uh, I hate the fact that they do the quarterfinal and semi final draw at the same time. Like, please. Like, can we think of that after the quarterfinal? Um, to be honest, I don't really want to watch it um so i'll probably just ignore it so no time to waste rolling into this game against lazio uh, a big derby currently away i guess you could call it they are currently eighth in the table um you know obviously having a bit of a down season but nevertheless they're a very tough side so i'm expecting a really tough game uh, this is the lineup we've gone with as you can see a couple of changes just really forced into some a couple of tired players spinazzola pellegrini etc the likes of Zalewski and Abraham also were, you know, tired, but I really don't want to drop Abraham for this game. Uh, and with Zalewski, you know, we've got no spare left back. You know, Vina's currently injured. So we uh, we just have to go with it, really. Um, other than that, I think we're going to actually stick with this attacking system. It seems to have, you know, helped us pick up a, a little bit of momentum. So I'm going to see how this one goes for this one. If, if it doesn't work out, then maybe we revert back to the cautious tactic. Ah, oh, Chido Immobile, 37th goal of the season. How the hell are you supposed to stop that in, what, February, is it? Dear me. At the front post as well, you know, these guys, Karsdorp, Scalvini, etc., they've got to deal with that. They have to deal with that. You to drive it down this side, and Dybala just cannot keep up with him. He cannot get even close to him and Rui Patricio has got to do better than that come on it's straight at you dear god Dybala just cannot keep up with him and, and god knows what Karsdorp is marking Zakani for some reason and Marcus Antonio oh that's such that's so poor everything about that goal really really bad can we please have an attacking highlight oh my god Dybala Giving the ball away. Lamella driving forward now. Scalvini manages to recover. Can we even retain the ball? No, Cristanti giving it away. It's so poor. Really, really bad. Through to Immobile. He's probably going to score. Yes, he does. It's horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. We are falling apart again. Urgh. My God. Simple. Just mark him tightly, please. Scalvini. Oh, he's not even looking the right way. I'm going to absolutely smash these to pieces. Smash these to pieces. We used to like, you know, it's not good enough. Not good enough. We've got to make tons of changes here. Because everyone is just playing so badly. Zalewski can go off. What else? Dybala, Abraham, they're all playing badly. Moretti's tired. Pellegrini will have to come on. I've not really got a lot of options on either. This is the annoying thing. Um, Cristanti's playing terrible. Jaliadini can come on for him. Uh, we can bring on, what, I mean, Correa maybe? For Dybala? That's really all I've got. Cards up playing terrible. Maybe bring Zeki Celik on. That's literally all I've got. Make a ton of changes. Very attacking. And let's see how it goes. Oh, Marashic getting so much time. Ah, oh, Immobile again. Who's marking him? Guys, can we not deal with that? It's been, it's just been horrendous. Just falling apart again. I don't know what is the matter with us. Have a look at the replay. See who's actually supposed to be marking him. I mean, there's people all over him. I think it's Scalvini who's on him. Spinazzola, yeah. Scalvini just at fault for every goal. Abraham back in. And 4 1 when unfortunately it's just it's going to be too little, too late. Unfortunately, Jaliadini, I think it was, with the assist. 
We'll have another look at it there, just taking it short from the free kick. But again, where was this in the first half? You know, it's too late. Too little too late. And especially when the defence just crumbles, what are we going to do? Lamella getting the ball. Pellegrini, nowhere near good enough. For Coley, what are you doing? Oh my God, we're falling apart. Can't even get out to him. Jesus. Look at this, Pellegrini just bottles the challenge completely. Then Nicoli, who's got to step out to him there. Oh, what is he doing? Yeah, I mean, I'm throwing the water bottle again. I don't care if they don't like it. I mean, they, they, it's not good enough. It's it's horrendous. It is so bad. But on the plus side, we've had a pretty good youth intake. Let's have a look at this geezer. Eduardo Feijão. Doesn't actually look brilliant on his attributes, but he's got five-star potential. So that is what we like. We've also got this guy, David Latella, Davide Latella. Unfortunately, he's a left midfielder, although he can play up front as well. He'll have to if he wants to play in our system. And we've got a couple of guys here, four-star potential as well, not too shabby. So that's okay. We will take that. So then, we've had the international break. We've gone away. I've calmed down a little bit, licked my wounds, as they say. I had a few tweaks, in particular to the set pieces defensively. Hopefully, we'll see an upturn in then. I've gone for a system similar to something that I used to use on, on Football Manager 2022. So, hopefully, we see an upturn there. Fiorentina have lost, so that's good news for us. Inter have drew as well. Uh, so, there is an opportunity to claim some ground back here. We can go back up to third with a win. We have to target wins in this game, particularly at home as well. So let's see what we can do. So this is the team we've opted for. Scalvini decided to get himself suspended in the last game thanks to five bookings, so well done to him. That means Matteo Gabbia returns to the team and Caleb Okoli goes into centre-back. We've also swapped in Spinazzola and Vigna as well for the full-backs. Pellegrini returns to the team ahead of Chris Dante. Was very, very close putting in Jaliadini after he came on and got an assist in the last game, but just preferred the leadership, captaincy and overall ability really. Of Lorenzo Pellegrini. So let's hope I'm not made to rue that choice. Juve, as you can see, a very, very strong lineup for them. Reverted back to the 4 3 3. They have the likes of Chiesa and Pogba and our return from injury up to full fitness. This is going to be a tough game already. You can see they've got the upper hand in the stats column. We do just look uneasy in possession a little bit. We look like we're kind of fighting to keep the ball. You see, like that, stuff like that is just absolutely exhausting it really is the loose touch is horrendous the bad passes we're going to give them they're going to score from this i've just i've just got a feeling Chiesa into Vlaovic. yeah you just know you just know every time every time on the highlight you just know when the goal is coming ah oh, cannot keep possession Chiesa in through to there and they've just let Vlaovic. we're supposed to be marking him tightly akoli's not even watching the ball again this is why i don't watch him 3d because you just don't see that Right corner, Dabala to whip this one in. Oh, mistake from the keeper, and Gabia pounces on it. We needed that look. We needed something jammy to get us into this game because the performance was poor. And thankfully, Wojciech Szczesny is the one who has given it to us. What on earth is he doing? Comes out to claim. He's nowhere near it. And Gabia, with no one at home, only has to nod it in. In the end, it was a bit of a hit and hope. Abraham following Quadrado. Did Maria getting a chance to run in? He'll cross it in. Pogba's free and scores. I knew a goal was coming. You just had a feeling. Again, can't even hold out till half time. Can't hold out till half time. So disappointing. Picks up so much space on the edge of the area as well. Quadrado having a field day down this right hand side. Di Maria. Look at that. Pellegrini just does not get anywhere near him. That is so disappointing. We only have to hold out for a few seconds. Right, well, now going to have to come off. We're going to bring on Chris Dante. He can go into this deep line playmaker role. Abraham's playing badly as well. We're going to bring on Joaquin Correa for him, who obviously came on and had that uh, decent spell in the second half of the Lazio game. Nice, well done. That's good pressing. Very well done. Dabalo, he's got to slot that through to Correa. And this is a chance. And it's 2-2. And that is much, much better. Brilliant pressing. A give and go for between Correa and Dabala. And that is is what we are looking for. Well done, Joaquin Correa. Moretti, the two former Juventus players, Moretti and Dybala having a hand in that goal, and Correa, the former Lazio player, who I kind of forgot about that when I did sign him, uh, puts it away, 2-2. Two -two. They're going to boot this. It's going to come straight back to... Uh, oh. Stop targeting Dybala. 
Why is he targeting Dybala on the kick? It should not be going anywhere near him. He's like five foot seven. He's the like worst aerial threat on the pitch. Ah, oh, and Akoli just cannot deal with Lavic at all. He's supposed to be on the cover. Ah, oh, Dean Maria to win this one in. I imagine this is going to be a goal. To be honest, if he ever wants to take it, you take your time, mate. Oh, it's going to be a penalty. Ah, oh, the wounds just get deeper and deeper, don't they? Penalty awarded. Pogba to take it with his ridiculous runner. Saved by Rui Patricio, but unfortunately, it's just going to be too little, too late. Right, well, that's full time then. Just another disappointing display. Defending is just horrendous. Like, players not even looking in the right direction. Hopefully, this is just a beta thing. Uh, because... Ultimately, that is it's so, so bad. And as you can see with the league table here, we're right back in the mix now. We've just made it so hard on ourselves because ultimately, we were like, what, six points clear of like fifth place and now, you know, well in a title race and now it is, it's just, we are folding, folding big time. So maybe I'll have to make some tweaks to the tactics. I mean, either I was uncautious that game, even though I was meant to be on attacking and that just seemed to make the defending just as bad. So maybe we try something else. Um, perhaps we move on from the kind of trying to play in the Mourinho style and we just kind of do our own thing and see how that one really plays out. Because at the moment, it's really starting to fall off a cliff a little bit, particularly against the big teams. In terms of the next one, I don't really know when I'll be back. Probably the second leg of the Europa League quarterfinal. Um, you know, maybe we put Sassuolo in there as well. That's a fairly big game. Only got a couple of games in between that one. As you can see, the, the amount of games now is, is ridiculous. Um, you know, to be playing, what, eight games this month is, um, is mad. I mean, we've just got one. It's, it's every week now. Two games just every week. Relentless. Um, and we're even going to June this season. So, it's going to be a tough one. Hopefully, you guys will join me for that episode. I'm sorry. It has been a little bit of a ranting session. We've played badly yet again. Two episodes in a row. We have really just dropped the ball big time. It's been pretty humiliating. Now, obviously, we did have that win that was very good against Leverkusen, but, you know, these last two games have been just shambolic, absolutely shambolic. Eight goals conceded it is just horrendous, so we've got to fix it somehow. If you have enjoyed it, you have made it through to the end, please do drop a like on the video, ring the bell to get notifications every time I upload as well. Don't forget to check out my gaming podcast. We've covered Football Manager on most of the episodes so far, so please do go and give that a like. All the descriptions are down below. And check out my Patreon. The links to that are in the description. You can get access to a whole host of perks and rewards. I think you guys will really enjoy. It's a great way to support the channel if you can't afford it. On that note, we are going to finish it there. Thank you so much for watching. And until episode six, where hopefully we can recover it, I will see you then.